Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about one more topic from lipid metabolism that is beta oxidation of fatty acids. So let us begin this presentation with an introduction that is introduction to lipids. Okay. Generally lipids are nothing but fat okay, which are essential for the body to perform some of the functions to perform some of the major functions and our daily functions. These lipids are very much important. Generally, these lipids are get synthesized in liver, and that synthesized lipids will be get absorbed by other body parts to perform functions. Okay, generally, uh, triglycerides and cholesterols are the main two types of lipids in the living cells. Generally, triglycerides acts as storage house of the energy, and cholesterol it is one of the uh, unique uh, unique lipid okay ubiquitinous lipid that consists of cell membrane steroids bile salts and signaling molecules and produces some of the steroidal hormones helps in the production of some of the steroid hormones okay generally what are the functions of lipids they are important source of energy as we already uh, discussed in the introduction uh, they are uh, they are uh, lipids are nothing but fats and that will be essential for the, the body to perform some of the functions okay depending base depending upon that uh, uh, sentence we are going to explaining this function in the first uh, point okay they are the important source of the energy and most energy rich compounds of all the nutrients okay these lipids are the most energy rich compounds okay uh, they forms structural components of cell membrane lipids uh, the second function is uh, that forms the uh, structural components of the cell membrane and it also forms a various messengers and signaling molecules with the body and lipid functions as a mechanical support for the vital body organs okay it, it will also helps as a mechanical support uh, for the so other body organs next what are the classifications of lipids generally lipids are classified into three types that is simple lipids compound lipids and derived lipids again simple lipids classified into two types fats and oils and waxes examples for fats and oils are uh, triglycerides and mixed glycerides these are the examples for fats and oils uh, examples for waxes beeswax carnivore uh, carnivore wax okay and next exam uh, next class is compound lipids okay in the compound lipids we get two types phospholipids and glycolipids examples for phospholipids cephalins and example for glycolipids kerosene uh, and under uh, derived lipids we get three types steroids terpenoids and carotenoids okay under steroids we get c29 c28 and c27 steroids terpenoids example for terpenoids triterpenoids example for carotenoids lyco lycopene and carotenes are the examples which comes under carotenoids okay uh, by observing all these things we will define what what is lipid generally lipids are biomolecules which are composed of long chain of hydrocarbon chains formed mainly by ester linkage between alcohols and fatty acids we call this as lipids. okay uh, next we will start our uh, uh, beta oxidation of fatty acid that is palmitic acid pathway okay the beta oxidation of fatty acids it is defined as the oxidation of fatty acids on beta carbon atom this results in sequential removal of two carbon atoms this is the definition for beta oxidation of saturated fatty acids okay where our uh, beta oxidation occurs the, what is the site of beta oxidation beta oxidation mainly occurs in three sites that is liver muscle and adipose tissue this is the general structure of fatty acid okay next uh, the beta oxidation of fatty acids involves three stages activation of fatty acid occurring in cytosol transport of fatty acids into mitochondria beta oxidation proper in mitochondrial matrix 
the uh, the beta oxidation of fatty acids undergoes uh, into these three stages we will look at the first stage that is activation of fatty acids occurring in cytosol or we also call it as site of stage of activation okay in the stage of activation let us uh, consider or let us imagine uh, this uh, box as cytosolic matrix okay in cytosolic matrix what happens the fatty acids get converted into acyl coenzyme a in the presence of enzyme thiokinase okay in the first uh, let us uh, look at the reaction here we have fatty acids in the cytosol we have fatty acids during the reaction first the fatty acid will be get converted into acyl aldehyde acyl acyl adenylate okay in the fatty acid we have fatty acids here okay this is a structure of fatty acids uh, when this uh, structure of uh, when this fatty acids undergoes reaction in the presence of thiokinase okay in the presence of enzyme thiokinase that uh, in that case what happens the energy will be get utilized okay the energy will be get utilized and this atp will be get converted into ppi okay uh, when the atp will be get converted into ppi at the time it will be forming acyl aldi uh, acyl adenylate uh, with the help of mg2 plus okay uh, in the next in the next step when the formed acyl adenylate again undergoes further gets converted into acyl coenzyme in the presence of enzyme thiokinase okay when the similarly look at here we have acyl adenylate uh, this will be formed uh, this acyl adenylate is formed previously with the uh, reaction of fatty acid in the presence of thiokinase enzyme again this formed acyl adenylate undergoes reaction in the presence of thiokinase enzyme to form acyl coenzyme as a end product uh, in this reaction the presence of mg2 plus is very much essential in the both reactions okay uh, next uh, we will be move, moving to uh, next stage that is transportation of fatty acid into mitochondria that is stage of transport in the stage of transport uh, what happens inner mitochondrial membrane is impermeable to activated fatty acids activated fatty acids are nothing but acyl coenzyme okay so for the transportation of uh, for the transportation carnitine carrier system is essential here okay uh, let us assume that uh, uh, let us assume that this is a uh, inner uh, not an mitochondrial outer mitochondrial membrane uh, let us assume this box as outer mitochondrial membrane in the outer mitochondrial membrane we have acyl coenzyme which we will be uh, got uh, get it uh, which we will be uh, initially uh, get it from this uh, in the cytosol matrix what uh, and which undergoes in the um, which undergoes in the series of uh, reaction okay from that we get acyl coenzyme this obtain acyl coenzyme the activated fatty acid binds to carnitine 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 palmitoyl transferase that is an enzyme okay that we also call that we are going to call it as cpt1 okay when acyl coenzyme a binds with cpt1 enzyme it will be uh, removes coah uh, coenzyme ah ash okay and it will be forming one of the intermediate compound that intermediate compound we are going to call it as acyl carnitine okay when acyl carnitine gets formed again it undergoes uh, in the acyl carnitine forms this will be uh, present in the outer membrane of mitochondrial matrix okay when this outer membrane of mito uh, when uh, again when this acyl carnitine undergoes reaction in the presence of cpt2 cpt2 means carnitine palmitoyl transferase 2 enzyme that enzyme helps acyl carnitine to get transfer into mitochondrial inner mitochondrial matrix from outer mitochondrial membrane okay when this comes inside the mitochondrial matrix immediately there is a separation takes place there is a separation in carnitine in carnitine and acyl coenzyme the separated carnitine again undergoes into the reaction again undergoes into the cytosol and again it will be combining with this acetyl acyl coenzyme uh, and it helps to the other molecules to 
enter into the mitochondrial matrix okay the formed acyl coenzyme this enter next stage that is beta oxidation proper in the mitochondrial matrix okay in the inside the mitochondrial matrix what happens the already we have acyl coenzyme inside the mitochondrial matrix it undergoes oxidation reaction okay uh, here in the oxidation reaction acyl coenzyme dehydrogenase enzyme and it forms double bond here okay uh, we observe here in between this uh, ch2 and ch2 we, uh, in here we have ch2 and ch2 okay when this acyl coenzyme undergoes reaction in the presence of acyl coenzyme dehydrogenase enzyme there is a formation of double bond is taking place here okay and it forms an intermediate that that intermediate we are going to call it as delta 2 trans enolyl coenzyme okay next this formed delta 2 trans enolyl coenzyme undergoes hydro hy, hydration reaction okay this enolyl coenzyme hydrolase causes hydration and forms beta hydroxy acyl coenzyme okay when this formed intermediate delta 2 trans enolase coenzyme undergoes reaction in the presence of enolyl coenzyme hydrolase enzyme okay that they there is an addition of one water molecule will be taking place so here uh, the double bond what we had in this structure the double bond that double bond will be get shifted to the next carbon atom here okay and where after shifting it forms one hydroxy group okay and this compound we are going to call uh, call it as beta hydroxy acyl coenzyme a okay when beta acyl hydroxy coenzyme a form okay that again undergoes oxidation in the presence of enzyme beta hydroxy acyl coenzyme a dehydrogenase okay here there is a conversion of nad to nadh takes place and this converted nadh will be entering into the atc cycle and when it enters the atc cycle there it produces three atp molecules similarly in the first stage when in the conversion of acyl coenzyme to uh, delta 2 trans enolyl coenzyme there also fad will be get converted into fadh the formed fadh it undergoes into the tca cycle when it undergoes into the tca cycle there it will be produces two atp two atps okay uh, let us come to the uh, come to the uh, come to our topic here okay uh, when beta hydroxylase coenzyme undergo again undergoes oxidation reaction in the presence of enzyme beta hydroxy acyl coenzyme dehydrogenase it forms beta keto acyl coenzyme observe here we have oh here okay we have oh here when this beta keto hydroxy acyl coenzyme undergoes reaction in the presence of enzyme beta hydroxy acyl coenzyme it forms one keto group here that is double bond o okay so we uh, so the name of this compound will be beta keto acyl coenzyme a okay next is the formed beta keto acyl coenzyme undergoes cleavage reaction undergoes cleavage cleavage reaction in the presence of enzyme thiolase here the addition of coa coash will be taking place so there is a formation of acyl coenzyme a and acetyl coenzyme a okay again the formed acyl coenzyme a it enters this cycle okay again the acyl coenzyme a enters this cycle once again into this cycle once again and the formed acetyl coenzyme a the formed acetyl coenzyme a it enters into the Krebs cycle it enters into the Krebs cycle okay next energetics okay in the energetics we have beta oxidation of seven cycles okay consider in the uh, uh, what we have discussed in the third step okay there there is a uh, conversion of FAD to FADH uh, takes place and NAD to NADH plus H plus takes place. Okay, uh, there are uh, totally it utilizes seven molecules of FADH and seven molecules of NADH to get converted into the required compounds. Okay, here seven FADH2 each FADH2 gives 
to ATP as we already discussed there FAD will be get converted into FADH2 and that FADH2 enters into the ETC cycle when it enters into the ETC cycle that it will be producing two ATPs okay by con by keeping that in mind we are going to calculate the energetics here okay seven FADH2 okay each FA one FADH2 is equal to two ATPs if we consider one FADH2 is equal to two ATPs okay then it will be become seven into two equal to the total yield of ATP is 14 here okay and in the next step uh, uh, and in the next reaction we, there is a utilization of NADH will be taking place okay each NADH produces three ATP molecules in the ETC cycle so seven into three equal to 21 okay here 21 ATPs yield there is a yield of 21 ATP taking place okay in the next okay uh, when acetyl coenzyme A enters into the Krebs cycle or TCA cycle there uh, it utilizes sorry there it acetyl coenzyme A will be get utilized by the TCA cycle okay so each TCA cycle produces 12 ATPs each ATP cycle each TCA cycle produces 12 AC 12 ATPs so by considering this in to mind okay we will be multiplying 12 into 8 acetyl coenzyme A total it will be producing 96 ATPs here okay total energy of one molecules of palmitile coenzyme A is by adding all these things we get 131 okay the energy utilized for the formation of palmitile coenzyme A is 2 okay net yield of oxidation of one molecule of palmitate is 129 okay hence from this energetic chart uh, it's been proved that beta oxidation ultimately generates high energy thank you